It's a very sad story, and it would be tempting to say that, you know, the moral is not to make psychedelics illegally or not to make MDMA, but what do you think can be learned from what happened to you? Oh, don't get caught. <laughs> you were one of the first clandestine MDMA I believe so. manufacturers. I believe so, yeah. I, I believe so. 76, 77, basically, when it, when it all started happening. And that was your primary way of supporting yourself, your only way of supporting yourself throughout the 90s? Yeah, once, once I met Susie and, and uh, came here, yeah, we were growing pot and making psychedelics. Steven's a complex man. He's always been moody. Oh, no. God damn it. You know, nerds weren't, they weren't big yet. <laughs> now people understand nerds. <laughs> Back then they didn't. Um, I did. Hey, you can, if I can't die yet, you can't die yet. I was half a nerd myself. <laughs> so you were studying chemistry. Why were you interested in that? It wasn't a girls major. My dad wanted me to learn typing. And I liked psychedelics and I liked it when theogens. Did you do chemistry work together? Oh yeah, we, yeah. Oh, at first, yeah, we did. He'd bounce ideas off me about new things, and I'd say, okay, you know, he, he was good for my brain. He, we got spoiled, you know. We, we had, before the bus, we, we didn't have any problem with money. I mean, we made more money than we could possibly spend, and we did. We, we just lived our lives relatively simply. If I simply had, you know, taken all this stuff and, you know, buried it deep or put it in a storage locker, who knows what, you know, there's a lot of things I could have done. But, you know, I mean, we were close to the end. We were basically at the point where we had enough precursors to make another 20 or 30 pounds of MDMA when we got busted. And, and our plan was to just phase out, was just say, okay, well, after that, we'll just do research. So, you know, we were like, God, we're so close. We'll just, we'll make another million dollars. You know, it'll be like, great, you know, it's fine, you know, no problem. It's here, we don't have to buy any more chemicals. Do you feel as if you don't get a certain credit that you deserve because you were doing this at the very beginning. I don't, in the I don't deserve any credit. Yes, I, you do. I was, no, I was just following the footsteps. You know, Sasha and David Nichols and people like that. I, no, I didn't, I didn't do anything. Well, think about it this way. The only reason that anybody cares about MDMA is right. because they've tried it. Yeah. If no one had tried right. MDMA, well, that's true. no one would know that this right. is valuable. No one right. would consider it a useful yeah. psychotherapeutic well, that's true. tool. The only way people are able to try these compounds is a yeah. chemist has to make exactly. them. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. You may be responsible for what? A million MDMA experiences? Maybe. And you sacrificed your life to do that? Mm, I guess, yeah, I guess so. I never really th thought of it that way. I just figured, well, that's, that's just what I did. Mm -hmm.